Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. The final worst performing tank in tier 9 brings us firmly and squarely to that of the TDs and that of the tortoise. Oh, the slow, lumbering beastie that is found in tier 9 in the British line. Oh, I actually like the tortoise. Now, a lot of people don't. A lot of people really struggle in this tank, and Blitzstars appears to show the same thing. This one has a 48.9% win rate. Admittedly, it's not the most played, but it's not the least played. It has a survival rate of 32.7%. Again, that's not the worst, by the way. If you go down, you know, we've got the uh, AMX 50 Fosh there that has got a worse survival rate. It has a, a damage per battle of 1,396, which is the worst, although the Fosh is trying to catch up. And it has a kills per battle of 0 0.664. Uh, again, that is, well, actually, that is the worst out of all of them. So what is it about this particular tank? What is it that the player base really doesn't like about the tortoise? Well, numerous things, and we're going to jump into the tank's parameters to see what those numerous things actually are. And then we're going to have a deep dive, as we do, to see if we can give some pointers out there to try and get the player base playing this tank a little bit more effectively. Here we are on its statistics or parameters screen, whatever you want to call it, in the garage, and we've got the tortoise loaded. Now, as you can see, I've got all the top modules here. So that's what we're focusing on because these tanks stock aren't the best, especially if you've got a tier eight gun in this thing. Hit points, well, it's got 1,908, which is quite good, to be fair. It doesn't have a turret, so there's no turret to armor frontally it's got 254 millimeters of armor on the side 152 and on the rear 102 so you can see that frontally this thing is a bit of a beast view range is only 273 well that's normal because it is a td and it's not expected to have a massive view range concealment again it's a big massive td so it's only 40% stationary, 34% moving, and 11% when firing. That is slightly better than the Conqueror that we saw, however, when it's moving and when it's uh, firing. Fire, wow, DPM is 3,585. That is obscene. I mean, that is massive DPM, and it's really, really nice. Reload time is 6.7 seconds. Again, it's very nice. Penetration, we've got 272 on its AP, that's its standard ammunition, 342 on its APCR, and a whopping 132 on its HE. That's pretty much similar to what we saw with the Conqueror. Looking at the damage output on its AP is 400, APCR is 340, and the HE 515. Again, pretty much like we saw with the Conqueror, it's a similar gun. Moving down, the aim time is just under four seconds. That means it's pretty, pretty nasty for a, a, a tank of this caliber. We want that aim time down. Dispersion, however, is not too bad, but I'm using it with a refined gun. That's why the dispersion is only 0 0.289. Gun depression, 10 degrees, much better than the Conqueror. That's because it hasn't got that big, you know, front glacius plate to get over. 20 degrees going upwards. It has 20 degrees left and right as well before you start turning the hull, moving further down. Speed, wow, this is the Achilles heel of this tank. 20 kilometers going forwards, 10 kilometers going backwards with an average speed of only 20. And you can also see that its terrain crossing ability is not that good. This is a slow lumbering beastie but it was always going to be a slow lumbering beastie because it is a squat, wide, thick, heavily armored TD. Jumping into the equipment, what equipment can we load up to improve our chances on this one? Well, I've got it with the calibrated showers because I want that penetration. Its DPM is good enough. I don't need to stick in a gun rammer. Again, I've got the defense system. This time I'm not bothering with the camo and concealment because I'm gonna be moving most of the time, to be honest with you. This thing doesn't like sitting at the back. So I've got the improved optics. Then got the enhanced gun laying device because I think 
the velocity of the shells is good enough, so I don't need that supercharge. I'm then putting on additional hit points rather than increasing the armor on the front, because without the turret, this thing doesn't really benefit from that extra 4%. I've then got the engine accelerator, just to give me a little bit more turn in the, uh, in the hull. And then using the refined gun rather than the vertical stab, I'm not going to be firing that much on the move. Not really, it's too slow. And then, as per usual, toolbox and I end consumables. Moving over to the ammo, well, I've been tinkering with the loadout. Normally I play it with a little bit more HE, but recently I've been playing it with 28 AP, 17 APCR, and only 5 HE. The reason being is because, you know, most things are going to come at you frontally and you trying to flank in this thing is going to be difficult. Most of the time you're going to be firing your HE at the likes of grillers, waffle tractors and the such. Moving over to the consumables itself, well, I've got the engine power boost. Why? Because I just want that little bit of power on occasion. It doesn't give you much, believe me. I've then got the multi restoration restore pack and adrenaline this thing i find doesn't get tracked as often as you would think and it's the reason why i'm not running two repair kits sometimes i drop the accelerator and i jump in with another track repair again guys this isn't like your perfect loadout this is what suits me what i'm currently running doesn't mean to say that you've got to run this over to the provisions well i've got pudding in tea because i want the crew to work faster got the protective kit because why wouldn't you and oddly enough, I've got the improved fuel, just again to give me that improved turn and a mobility wise. Moving over now to have a look at its actual armor, because that's what everybody needs to see on this one. This is what a tortoise looks like facing off against an E75. And as you can see frontally, this is a big problem. This is a big problem. And this is a big problem. And therein lies its Achilles heel armor-wise. Now look, you don't have to keep it front on. If you if you turn it slightly, remembering it's got 20 degrees, look, I mean that's quite a lot. You can narrow down those angles. This is still wide open, and this is still a big, big problem. That turret hatch. Try to angle it up though and use that 20 because you're narrowing down these angles quite a lot. And this is what the tortoise likes to do. It likes to be a little bit of a side scraper, but you've got to side scrape it by hiding that cupola, because if you're not hiding that cupola, you're pretty, pretty wide open and everybody is going to aim for it. Frontally, as I said, it's, it's wide open on this cheek. So you do need to realize that, guys. It's not as impenetrable as people think anyway let's jump into a couple of games and let's show you what the tortoise is actually capable of doing if you just play it to its abilities right so this is an interesting game and the reason i'm showing this replay is to show you what the tortoise is actually capable of doing now for the life of me i'm not suggesting that everybody plays the tortoise this way we're here, both myself and my long-suffering two-mate Heffalump, on Castilla in our tortoises. And we're going to do something that you generally don't see players in tortoises do. We're going to frontline it. And when I say frontline it, I mean we're going to, I'm going to go to the castle area and I'm going to frontline this thing. And Heffalump is going to basically try and flank round. Most people in tortoises don't do this. They normally sit at the back and sort of farm damage. But we thought we'd show you aggressively what this tank really can do. Because there are so many naysayers out there who think that the tortoise is one of the worst tanks in the game. When actually it really isn't. It's not a bad tank at all. Most tanks in the game are sort of hit and miss. There are a couple of sh howlers out there that are shockingly terrible. But nine times out of ten, it's not the tank. It's the player driving the tank that's at fault. And if you, you know, if you understand the tank, 
then you can get the best out of the tag. I mean, look at this poor object. He's going to come over and I'm going to smack him for almost 500. And with my reload and my armor and my turn, I'm going to absolutely crucify him. And he gets crucified. We're already done. A thousand damage. I've only fired two shots. Now we've got that E50 that E is just totally out of his depth. He uh, He's looking for a way to shoot me, but it's too late. He's gone. He's down. He's out. Now I've got everybody else pushing on me because they think, oh, it's a tortoise. We can push the tortoise because it's a terrible tank. And it's not a terrible tank. We've already done 1,100 damage. Okay, I'm not setting the world on fire. Never, prog never professed that I was ever going to. But we are having fun. My teammate is having a whale of a time over the other side of the map flanking round. Now this poor Louvre, he's gonna have, he's gonna feel the wrath of the tortoise as well because he's trying to sort of hit me. He, he think he's safe behind the rock. I just load the AP and boom, put one into his side. Now we've done almost 1600. He's bouncing me because, you know, <laughs> just the way it works. And this is an aggressive move by the tortoise. There's only two tanks left and we're just having a great time here. My teammate is having such a good time, he's telling everybody to kill me because we were just laughing on the floor here. You don't play the tortoise like this generally, but you can, and that is the point. It is not the disaster that everybody thinks. I mean, this poor, poor object, Star Chaser, what can he do? He can't do anything about it. And with that, we do 2,331 damage, we block 990, and we get some kills to our bargain. I mean, that is a fantastic game, even though I do say, my, say so myself, I enjoyed it. You know, we got a third class for our troubles and we had a whale of a time. That is what the tortoise can do when you know how to play it. And this is the problem. So guys, you know, it's not the worst tank, not by a long shot. I mean, we were the second top damage there. I am happy with that tank i am happy with that game why wouldn't i be let's have a look at another game and let's just see you know if the tortoise can do some more shining out there right here we go on mines terrible map for the high tiers and i've just shown you an aggressive strat in the tortoise and now i'm going to show you the camping strat in the tortoise the thing about the tortoise is it does have a relatively nice gun Okay, and if you can hide that cupola and that right hand side of the tank, you can actually have a good time in it because that's the weak side of the tank. The right side is the weakness. You can see we've just bounced a shed load there from that VK and we're gonna wait and we bounced that one. That wasn't a great shot. But as long as I'm keeping the right side covered and protected, then the tanks on the hill on the enemy team can't really do anything about it. I'm just going to wait for this VK and then smack him and get an engine fire. Look at that. There is 758 damage, just like that. Boom. Now with my reload, boom again. He's gone. That's a tier 9 heavy out of the game. And, you know, at the moment I've got all my hit points. I've taken one kill. And I've done shy of a thousand damage and I've only fired two shots. Fantastic. This is what I like about the tortoise because you can do this. Now we're just going to wait for the T-57 Heavy to stick his nose out, or maybe we'll look at the Yo instead. Get a nice roll into the Yo. Now into the Heavy, because our reload is fantastic. Can we track him? Yes, we can. And again, now we're at 1,700 damage. And this is what a Tortoise is capable of doing. There's no point in me sitting here now. They, uh, they know that I'm there. Our tanks are pushing while my Toon Mate is pushing. So, need to get up close and personal with him. Oh, look at that. Getting farm from the side, not a problem. So now we're gonna front line it again. We're gonna try our best to front line it, that is. I mean, the problem with the tortoise is it is incredibly slow and a slow tank, wow, you know, people didn't get on with it. So we've done 2,020 damage, we've taken one kill and we've had a good time. But look at the gun on this thing, that poor E50. He thinks he's safe, he thinks he's covered. Uh, he gets all the way behind, but look, just the slightest bit of tank showing. This gun will just hit it. And watch this for a shot, though. I mean, this is what this tank and this gun can really do. Wait for it to come down. Boom. Who needs the dispersion? <laughs> I mean, 
a lot of people, as I said, there's a lot of naysayers out there saying that the Tortoise is a terrible tank. It's always been a terrible tank. Actually, it isn't. It's a nice tank. Yes, if you play it badly, if you stick it in the wrong place, if you're, you know, if you, if you just don't understand the parameters of a Tortoise, then yeah, you're going to end up having a very bad time in it. But if you know the maps and you know what the tank is capable of, then believe me, the tank is not as shabby and is not as terrible as everybody thinks it is. I like the Tortoise. I've always thought it's a good tank. It is, to an extent, team dependent. If you don't have a, a good team around you, like most TDs, then you can and will get absolutely trashed. But as far as the tank itself goes, I mean, we knocked out 3.3k there. We get a nice second class. We only killed one tank, but we had a good time in doing it. And that 3.3k in a tier 9 TD is very, very helpful. Okay, we, it's not a great credit maker, I must admit. Uh, but look, the two tortoises there, both top damage. And that is one of the things that you can get away with in this tank. So don't write off the tortoise just yet. Learn about the tank, and more importantly, learn about the maps. Play the tank to the weaknesses, and then the strengths will come. Now, now, don't get me wrong, I know a lot of people out there really hate the tortoise. They really don't see the practical benefits of this tank. Irony is you need to grind this tank to get to the Death Star, which is by far a worse tank. It's a meme tank. And a lot of people, therefore, just consider this tank to be a sort of a nonsense tank that you need to just get to that 183. And that does the Tortoise an, un an injustice. And the reason why it has such a low win rate and why the player base is struggling in this tank is for that reason and that reason alone. They are not interested in doing well in this tank. They're interested in getting that 183. They're interested in just getting past this tank as soon as possible. Pretty much like the T95. A lot of people don't like the T95. When a game, the T95, whilst it is slow and cumbersome, it's actually a relatively good TD in tier 9. Same applies here to the Tortoise. Whilst it's slow, whilst it is cumbersome, it's actually a really nice tier 9 TD. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been my look at the Tortoise, a tank that is, well, to be relatively honest with you, is a tank that the player base don't enjoy, don't like it, automatically dismiss it, and therefore it's never really played spectacularly well. And I think that's a shame because if you know how to play this tank, if you know your maps and you know your strategies, you can really make a difference out there in a Tortoise. It's not as bad as people think. So don't, don't just write this one off as a stepping stone to the 183. Anyway, as usual, I say my normal stuff, guys. Remember, at the end of the day, it's just a game. So stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because that, at the end of the day, is what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun and being happy.